Linear algebra is essentially the study of vectors, matrices, and how they interact with each other, as well as their many properties within. So using Manim, we can visualize a lot of those cool things. And so the first step you want to do is you want to change your um, scene into something that's called a vector scene. So this is the boilerplate code we've been using in the past videos, if you were wondering. So first let's add the grid and let's add the axes. So this is just pretty much the space where the vectors are going to live, aka the vector space, but just a visual form of it. So we first do self.add axes. And then you can choose whether to have them drawn. I'm just going to do anime equals true just to see them once for the purposes of this video. And then you want to do self.add plane. And then this you can also animate. Let's we'll just animate it to true for now. And so um, on a vector plane, usually we, we would want to like label the basis vectors. So if, if you if you don't know what I'm talking about, they're just kind of like the one unit that's just um, standard throughout the whole grid. So you'll see in a second. They're usually one by one length. So I'm just going to create a group called basis vex and. I'm gonna have that equal to self dot get. This is a long one, so get basis vectors. And then once we get them, we're just gonna do add. So self dot add basis vector vex. So then this should draw out our plane. So I'm just gonna do self dot wait and let's see how it is. Bam, those are our basis vectors. Now that we got our uh, plane drawn out in our basic form, let's customize that plane real quick. So just like with the 2D or 3D graph, you can do a config dictionary just to specify the properties you want. So all right, so let us add vectors now in our main method, well in our constructor, this is not the main method. Don't worry about that. So let's create a vector, my vec equals a vector, which we have done in a previous video before. Let's say three comma two, and as a random object, we can do things like set color, let's make this orange, like it's, I don't know. And then we can just do self.add my vec, and then Right now what it's gonna do is it's gonna draw a vector on this linear plane, but we also would like to have the vector labeled as well. So a column vector right next to this, like this essentially like ray or this line with an arrow on it as a column vector representing its i hat and j hat, its components. So the way we would do that is we would create another object called label vector equals Equal vector coordinate underscore vector underscore coordinate underscore, underscore label from whichever vector you want and then we're gonna specify a color of that as well just to match it up and then self dot play we would want to show creation label vector just so we can have it like drawn out and then self dot Oh wait, one thing I forgot. Right now self.add just adds it statically, but one thing you can do is change this to self.add vector. Oops, self.add vector. And this kind of grows it from the center. So before before you click, before you run this, we gotta change one thing. So right now, a problem with the vector coordinate label method in matrix.py, which is in mandum lib. The problem with that is it has these background rectangles behind each of the texts. And the, the idea behind that was in case if the coordinate label was black on a black background, you wouldn't be able to see it. So therefore you would add the rectangles behind it, but then that like one exception kind of overrides all the general cases here. So it, it just adds a really ugly looking rectangle. So lines 50 and 51, uh, I'm pretty sure, yes. Lines 50 and 51, just go on them, delete them. Uh, keep the color, but just remove the background rectangles. And then on line 40, label equals matrix. So whenever you're creating the matrix here, you're going to set this to false. Add background rectangles to entries equals false. 
save, and now let us run our code. Go from the center, right, the coordinates. All right, so when you multiply a matrix times a vector, you get a linear transformation. And the way we can visualize what that means is through Manum. <laughs> So the first thing we want to do is with our boilerplate code here, we have a class. I'm going to change this into something that's called a linear transformation class. Transformation scene. Linear transformation scene. And then just as we did above, we can add the same config of uh, dictionary. It works just as, just as well here. And then in the construct file, I'm going to, it's a little bit different. So you do self.setup. And what this does is just, just sets up the grid for you. And the reason is because the linear transformations, they usually start with similar grids. That's why you have it in this class. But not all like vector scenes have the grid, if you know what I mean. And then we can also do self.wait, just so you don't see it. And then I just want to you know, be able to show 3, 2 multiplied by a certain matrix. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy the, some of the code and paste it here. I know it's not fun to copy code in a tutorial, but for this purposes, uh, I'm just going to do it. So our label vector is going to, the code is going to change a little bit different. So what we're going to do is we're going to do self dot add moving manum object. Moving object, my, can I type my vec? And so what this does is when we transform it, the, the, the column vector that represents this vector, my vec, is going to move with the transformation. It's just going to rotate, though. It's not going to shear or anything. And so we can use the same code, add vector, since we're in a linear transformation scene. And then underneath, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create some text equals text mayhem object, and I'm going to call this, uh, you know, shear. And then uh, what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do self.add transformable manum object, and this is going to be text. And you'll see there's a big difference between transformable and moving manum object. Those are two very different things I'd like to point out. So the way we apply transformation is one line, self.apply matrix. As you can see, um, when we apply this matrix, there's also inverse, inverse transpose. Just make sure it's invertible if you do inverse, otherwise you don't want manum spitting errors at you. And we can just do self.apply matrix for now. And then we just want to create a matrix. So the way we do that in technically in like NumPy is you just, it's like an array of vectors, really that's what it is. So this matrix actually I want it to be here and then I don't want the Y thing to change. And yeah, that, that's really all that you do. I'm just going to do self dot wait and see what happens. Have a vector. It shears it. See, this is exactly what matrix, what the thing does. So you can see the white uh, grid that's original and grayed out in the background. And the shear is like it shearing. And now we're going to be learning how to create vector fields in Manum. So the way we do that, it's actually not super difficult. We first have to, like, we first have to have a function from which the vector field is created from. Because the vector field like for multivariable calculus, it's the gradient of a multivariable function. And in 2D space, it's of a function with two variables, like f of x comma y. So in our case, I'm gonna create a function in a similar way to um, the way we did, uh, what was it, parametric functions in our 3D and 2D graphing videos. So numpy.array, and then for the J for the i hat or yeah the i hat so the x values I'm just gonna have it be two times p naught well p the first which is it just means x and this uh, right here just means x in this case and I'm also just gonna subtract it from p well, subtract it from p naught 
And I, I, I know this equation beforehand. So yeah, this, this is going to be our x or i hat, i hat. And then for our y hat, or for the y or j hat, I'm going to have it be y squared minus x. So this is the y values or j hat. This is pretty much going to be our function that we're going to graph on the 2D plane. And the way we actually do that is we're going to create a field, just because it's in the manum object, of the certain function bunk. And then this field is also a manum object, so we can do um, set color. We can also do, I'll show you how to do set color by gradient in, in a sec, but you can just set color. Let's say this is orange. This is some, I guess, Fanta, maybe. So. Then if we want to animate it, the way, we're, the way we would animate it like growing, as you'll see in a sec, it's a very specific command, so it would be grow arrow of each of our vectors for vec in field. So this field right here is going to be the name of your field, and that's, we got to have, we got to remember that. And then self dot. All right, let's play this. And there we go. There's our uh, Fanta vector field, I guess, if you want it. You could you could think of this as like maybe it coming from the like dispenser machine where it's just like I, I don't know. It's this is our vector field. So that was a pretty cool uh, vector field, but that was an example of a static vector field. So how would we create something that's like a dynamic or moving vector field? Well. The way we do that is we just transform between the two between two different vector fields of two separate functions. And then you can transform between a third and then you can keep swapping to mimic movement. So here I created two functions. It's just sine of x and cosine of x. I just swapped it. I just swapped it, you know. But uh, what this is gonna do is it's gonna create the wave, as you'll see. So I have two different vector fields, and what I want to do is I want to transform them. So we would do self.play, transform, field one, oops, field one, and field two. And then what it's going to do is it's just going to transform it and switch the memory location of field one into, for, copy field two into the memory location of field one. So then we also need to create a field three, which is going to be a, uh, it's going to be its own vector field, which is just going to be a copy of vector field one. Actually, yeah, I'll, I'll just say field one copy, vector field bunk one. And then we can do field one copy dot. I'm just gonna copy the same colors as the first one. And then we would do self dot play, the same thing of transform. And this would be field two. So no, it's actually field one, sorry. Field one into field three. Field one, copy. Almost made that, almost made a big mistake there. And so it starts and ends with the same frame. So what you could do is you could put this uh, video into like a video editor or maybe like Tumblr to have it be like a looping GIF. But yeah, this is how you could, this is just a basic way to transform between two vector fields. This is one, this is the sine, negative cosine, and then back to sine. So it's like moving. And this like could represent river flow or ocean flow. Actually, ocean flow would be a lot more like wavy and tumultuous, but uh, yeah, this is, this is really, this is cool, I guess. But yeah, thank you for watching the video. Hope it's been helpful. I'll see you in the next one.